Welcome to an episode 10 of In the Kitchen with Wynn, where I have candid and unedited conversations with guests that share their knowledge and experience to support the food and beverage CPG industry. Today, our guest is Courtney Shane. She is the founder and CEO of Challenger Brand Group, a consulting firm that builds consumer-focused strategies for emerging brands. Welcome, Courtney. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Wynn, for having me. So excited to be a part of this podcast. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have you on here. I know that so many founders and business owners are really going to benefit um, from our chat and your knowledge. Um, Courtney, so I wa- something I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, when I was first starting build- to build my pitch deck, I had a lot of investors tell me to really focus on the brand story and the founder story. Can you tell me about your thoughts on storytelling and why you think, why is it important? Yeah, so I'm a big fan of storytelling. And um, it's funny because I think storytelling feels a little bit like a buzzword these days. Um, but it's really for a good reason. Storytelling is a very, very powerful tool for engaging with others, for capturing attention, and for influencing people. And it's a really uniquely human trait. It's actually how we connect as a species. It's how we relate to each other. And it's really what moves history forward. So if you think about some of the great leaders throughout history, think of like Churchill, Napoleon, Julius Caesar, and so on. They really built followings because they were great storytellers. Mm -hmm. And in today's world, we're constantly bombarded by messages. We have short attention spans and we can really only comprehend about three to five concepts at one time. So the question becomes, how do you communicate a complex message in a way that's both meaningful and memorable? Well, you do that through storytelling. Now, unfortunately, most people really struggle with storytelling as a skill I mean, you just right. think about how many boring presentations you've been to. Yes, it sounds so much easier than it is, don't you think? Absolutely. I think it's it's a simple concept, but in reality, most people are uh, really bad at it, uh, to be honest. <laughs> um, and, you know, some people would say, well you know, you lose, you lose people's attention because our attention spans are getting shorter, but actually I'd argue we're just becoming more selective in what we pay attention to. And if you think about it, like we'll sit through a two and a half hour long movie or a 10 hour binge session of our favorite TV show. And the reason for that is Hollywood is full of the best storytellers. Absolutely. Um, So when you then apply this to business and brands and, you know, your example of what investor feedback has been uh, for you, um, the difference between a strong story can mean someone buying your product or investing in you and your brand or being forgotten and dismissed. Um, So it's, it's really important. Uh, I agree. And I think it's that relatability. Like I remember Mm -hmm. even before starting my business, uh, seeing, you know, seeing a news article or, or blog about another mom, like discovering her passion uh, accidentally in her kitchen or or in the middle of the night, just making crafts and then end up building this successful business. So it's something that I, what that really inspired me and always, I was always interested in those stories, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it comes back to that connection and the emotional connection is really important. Great. And so in what context is storytelling most helpful for a CPG founder? So I think there's really four key stakeholders here where it's really, really important to be good at storytelling. So those would be consumers, Mm -hmm. retailers, investors, and employees. So for consumers, Obviously, having really strong product benefits that are well articulated, that can help a consumer understand what your brand is, but the story really helps answer why. It's why they need it, and it builds that emotional connection. For retailers, the story comes into play when you start thinking about how your brand fits into their vision for the category. So if you're able to paint for a retailer what their full category vision should be, then it becomes almost a foregone conclusion that your brand needs to be a part of that vision. Right. For investors, investors are inundated with pitches all the time and they spend maybe 30 seconds on pitch decks or emails. 
So you need to have a really strong, easy to follow narrative that gets them excited about your brand. And then for employees, having a strong vision for the company can attract and retain talent. And this is especially important as more people are looking for mission and, and purpose-driven organizations. Right. And I, I agree with you on, um, on all of those points and especially the employees. I feel like, you know, there are times I've done, I've helped people out or done jobs because I'm so passionate about the mission and it's not so much about the money. It's like you, you believe in that company, you believe in that product. So, you know, and as I retain new talent, that's, you know, even as, um, con with contractors, those are the people that I really want to, to hire and be on my mm -hmm. team, the, the ones that really believe and care about the business, right? Oh, absolutely. And so, and so what are some of the common mistakes that you've seen with storytelling? So I could probably spend hours talking about all the various mistakes that folks have made, but I think there's, there's a few that I've seen consistently, um, that, that, uh, seem to be common mistakes. So uh, first is a lot of times people are too detailed. Um, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, uh, the default that some people have is to just throw a bunch of data at the page and mm -hmm. see what sticks. But the challenge with that is it doesn't actually add a lot of credibility and it just confuses the point. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really intentional with what data points you include and why and not over power the, the audience with too much. Um, another mistake that I've found often um, is speaking to the wrong audience. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that I think can be really hard, particularly for purpose-driven brands or brands that are targeting younger consumers, because sometimes a founder will write a, a pitch deck, for example, that speaks actually better to their core consumer than to the investor. And it's really hard sometimes to strike that balance of being true to your brand and your brand tone of voice, but also sounding credible and like the adult in the room. Right. Um, another common problem that I've seen is having a lack of focus. Uh, this I call the shiny object syndrome, mm -hmm. where uh, I think leaders get really caught up in their vision and get excited about doing everything and being everywhere all at once. But not only does this confuse the message, but it makes it really hard to believe that it's achievable because at the end of the day, we have a limited number of resources. Right. Um, kind of on the other end of the spectrum from being too detailed is I've also seen folks be too high level or too ambitious. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something where, um, I applaud ambition, but at the same time, if your if your vision is so ambitious that it seems like it's going to be a lot of time, a lot of resources, mm -hmm. and maybe not even possible to accomplish, mm -hmm. then nobody really believes that that's something that's feasible. And I then, I say, that. yeah, and it, I yeah, think and, there's, and there's like a pathway to growth, right? Like we've talked right. about is, um, you know, instead of spending, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars before testing the market. And, and if you're pitching that you're like, I'm going to get into all these stores, which I'm guilty of on my first pitch deck. I'm like, oh, by a month, I'll get into corporate sprouts. And in two months, I'll get into Whole Foods. And, um, and I think that because I didn't know, I didn't know right. at the time. So I think there's a lot of trial and error there. But when you when you get help from the beginning and have someone kind of coach you the process, it it definitely builds credibility like out of the gate because you know yeah, where absolutely. It yeah. And it, I mean it's it's not to say that you can't achieve those things. It's you need to make it really clear of how you're going to do that yeah. in a way that's grounded in reality. Yes, I I agree with that. And so give us some tips, like what are, um, what are some tips or advice or things to watch out for that you recommend to founders when they're telling their brand story? So first and foremost, I'd say know your core. Uh, what is the core reason for being for your brand? What's that core benefit? What's that one key message that you want people to take away when, when they leave the conversation with you? Um, Knowing that and using that kind of as your true north is really important and very, very helpful 
when it comes to telling your story in any kind of context. Always go back to that true north of what is that core reason for being for why you exist. Mm -hmm. And then make sure that everything kind of speaks to that. Yeah, um, I think so authenticity, people mm -hmm. can sense authenticity. Um, it's just one of those things like when, like with, with the branding, with the messaging, with the story, the story, they can tell if, if the founder is being authentic or not. Absolutely. Um, I'd say second piece of advice is create attention, mm -hmm. um, with stories, every good story has conflict. So when putting this in the context of a brand, what is that conflict or consumer tension that your brand is solving for? How do you, how do you articulate that problem or conflict in a way that's really tangible and meaningful and relatable is really important to kind of drive that sense of urgency and, and make either consumers, retailers, investors feel connected to why you exist again back to what's the core reason for being really build out that problem um to to make it really powerful third i would say uh make sure you tailor your message to the audience mm -hmm. so when you think about what's your pitch deck that should look very different from a social media post make sure that you're considering how you use tone examples different content for the different audiences Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I would say is bring your passion, bring yourself in a, an authentic way. Um, passion is really infectious. It's actually the reason why I love uh, doing the work that I'm doing and working with founders in the startup space is passion is everywhere and it's very infectious um, and it's energizing for others. Right. If you believe in your idea, others will follow. Right. No, I, I love that. And it's, it, it sounds like, you know, I mean, I've grown up uh, and you hear it all the time, like follow your passion, follow your passion. Um, and sometimes you might go like for, for me, this is like my fourth career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes it takes time to figure out your passion, but I think that once you find it, it's, it's hard to dim it. Right. It's, it, it's mm -hmm. something that you love to do and you believe in your business um, and I think finding a way to, to relay that message is so important. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like a lot of times, uh, founders will be a little gun shy about that because, um, it feels maybe too personal or not the right context for, for kind of letting their self shine through, mm -hmm. but it's, it's such a disservice to yourself to not bring your passion and bring yourself to the table because that's the reason you're here. Um, and if, if you're very, you know, one dimensional and, and cold and, and, uh, monotone in your delivery, no one's going to be excited about your idea. Um, but if you're absolutely oozing with passion and excitement, like there's no way that you can not be excited with that person. Yeah. And I think the times have changed a lot too, because I remember, you know, fresh out of college, starting a corporate job. It's like, you don't talk about your family. You don't talk about mm -hmm. your personal life. It's very business oriented, very professional. And I think that with, with entrepreneurs, um, it's the opposite. It's like, of course you have to know what you're doing and you have to do all the business aspect of it, but sharing your message with passion. And, and like you said, in it, like be authentic, I think is one of the most important uh, aspects of storytelling. So Courtney, so tell me, tell me a little bit, like what kind of resources can we, can you give our founders and, and do you offer storytelling services and, and helping founders create a, a story to, well, they might have a story, but like curating their story and how to tell it uh, to either, you know, their consumers, retailers or investors. Absolutely. So that's, uh, if you were to boil down my services into what, what's my core belief and why I'm here mm -hmm. is to help founders bring their stories to life in a way that's compelling for consumers, retailers, investors, employees, and any other stakeholders that matter. 
Um, this, I mean, I'm a huge believer in the power of storytelling, if that wasn't obvious. Yes. Um, and, and it's something that I absolutely love helping others who have the passion, but maybe struggle with how to articulate it in a way that uh, connects with others in that authentic uh, way. Uh, outside of, of my services, there's a lot of resources out there. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say at first and foremost, practice is the biggest thing when it comes to storytelling. Storytelling is a skill like any other. So the more you do it, the better you get at it. But there are some more formal ways to kind of hone this skill. So some companies actually offer storytelling training. So if you're at a corporate job, that's something definitely to consider and, and take advantage of if it's offered. Um, a kind of outside of the box approach um, that folks might not consider firsthand is theater or writing classes. Mm -hmm. That's something where the story is very central to what the medium is. And it can be helpful to learn the frameworks and archetypes and whatnot um, that come into stories and then be able to transfer that into a business context. And then there's also a lot of books and articles and TED Talks out there. Um, just to name a few of my favorites, um, Creative Inc. is by Ed Catmull. He's the founder of Pixar. Fascinating book about the story of building Pixar, but the, also the importance of stories. Mm -hmm. Resonate by Nancy Duarte. Uh, that breaks down kind of the, the back, backbones of what makes a story and how does that come to life in presentations. Mm -hmm. And then Hitmakers by Derek Thompson talks about um, kind of the differences of what makes a hit. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of tangential to storytelling. Storytelling is not kind of the central theme, but it's some of the nuances of how things relate to people that I think is really valuable when it, when you start thinking about storytelling. I love that. I mean, I'm always looking to learn and, and I love to read, um, but I love that you said about theater because that is something that I thought about, you know, I, I don't have the time right now, but if you think about actors or, or, you know, people who do theater, it's, it's the whole, the way they present themselves. And, and I think that as I continue to work on pitching and, and getting into pitch competitions, that is something I've been looking into because it, like you, as you know, I had a pitch competition last week and being on stage and talking to, in front of a crowd is so different than, you know, sitting here and chatting with you or, or talking in front of a group of people I know. Um, and everyone says, be yourself, just be yourself. And it's not easy being yourself no. in the crowd <laughs> <It's really not. laughs> of 500 people you don't know and, and presenting your, you know, your story and your brand and, and your strategy. So I, I really love that. And I, I think that that is something that I, I'm really going to start looking into. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. And I mean, I think the, the other thing that as, as you know, learning from your, your pitch presentation, um, pitch competition last week is it's very different too, in terms of what your expectations are versus reality, like things right. can get wrong and you have to shift and, and adjust. And, um, actually in the context of theater classes, I'd encourage you to look at improv. Um, mm, that's something that's that right. I've, I have a personal passion for. I've done a number of improv classes. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's super fun. Most people are intimidated by it, but I would say improv is something that teaches you a lot about uh, how to think on your feet, how to be okay with being uncomfortable and how to, you know, present yourself in, in a variety of contexts and just kind of roll with it. And at, at the end of the day, like, as, as you noticed from your pitch competition, sometimes that's what you just need to do. Yes. And, and for our listeners who don't know, uh, I had some technical difficulties with the clicker last week and I was the first one to present. I had the whole, uh, my whole pitch memorized, the slides memorized. And when, when the clicker didn't work, it definitely took away a lot of time and, and kind of threw me, uh, threw me off, uh, of my whole, you know, my whole journey, how I envisioned everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I, I managed the best I could, but, you but did great. with that mm -hmm. experience, 
I agree. I think that, you know, I want to practice and have resources on being able to pivot from those moments because I know it won't, it was the first time, but I know it's not going to be the last time. Absolutely. And I mean, taking it to other examples as when you're in a meeting with someone, uh, if you're presenting your, your company to a potential investor, you don't know what questions you'll get asked. You might get interrupted throughout the presentation and having that, that kind of foundational. And again, it goes back to knowing your core, knowing the key problem you're solving for, and then being comfortable kind of adapting as you go, um, having that kind of central thread of what is the story you're trying to tell can be really helpful in, in adapting to those unforeseen, uh, hiccups. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Courtney, for being here today. Um, I just want to let the listeners know that I actually work with Courtney myself personally with Wind's Kitchen. And, you know, you've been such a huge help for me leading up to the competition. I mean, I thought I had a pretty good storyline and and the slides were were great, but you you really honed it down. And when you talked about um, some of the common mistakes of being do- too detailed, that was one of my my mistakes. And being able to really condense that into a more powerful message uh, without confusing the audience. And mm-hmm. without giving so much information, but just getting straight to the point, but having it so powerful, I, I think that the the audience and the judges really understood my mission and really understood my brand and why I started. And it really was because of you. I mean, I can rattle on about, you know, oh, yeah, well, this is what I'm going to do. And I, I have all the strategy in my head, but being able to clearly communicate that in an organized way is I would say one of my biggest weaknesses and and you really really helped me with that and I know the work we did is just gonna it's gonna continue giving um as you know I revise my long pitch deck to to get ready to pitch to investors so I'm super grateful for that and I know that um I know that this is going to be so helpful for so many founders well, thank you for saying that. I'm very, very glad to hear that you have found a lot of value in the work that we've done so far. Thanks, Courtney. And I will make sure that I post your website and information on how everyone can get a hold of you. Um, but I, you know, just to the listeners, I highly, highly recommend Courtney. Uh, your passion comes through, your knowledge comes through. And so I'm super excited to share with our listeners. Thank Thanks you. so much, Lynn. Bye.